Okay, principals, I want to give you five tips as to why you should learn ChatGPT. Here we go. Get your notepad and get these five tips down. Tip number one, automation of repetitive tasks. Think about that for a second. If you're a principal, think about the amount of data that you get. Think about the amount of responsibilities that you have during the school day, like walking around and checking classrooms and making sure students are at school. Think about the data that you get each year at the end of the school year, the summative information that you get from your state assessments or the benchmark data that you get, and then actually trying to analyze quantitative data or even that qualitative data when you're walking around. What if you could take all of this information and throw it in a chat bot or chat GPT? You can put it in and say, analyze this data and show me the trends in attendance. Show me the trends in this student group as to why this student group might be um, absent more often based on whatever criteria. Maybe there is a local thing going on. Maybe there's an event um, going on in your area. Or you can take the academic data, like the science data, the math data, the um, language data, and say, why is this student outperforming this student? Maybe there's some generational factors in this. And you can come up with a summary and then you can also um, teach your teachers how to use that data and come up with a summary to help you think and process. Now, I'm going to just caution you a little bit to say, yes, ChatGPT can give you information about what's happening, but you're going to have some other things um, that you're aware of, some qualitative things that you can actually either enter or process through. But it'll certainly give you some tips and tricks on how to problem solve through what's happening by automating all this data. Tip number two, improve decision-making. Decision-making as a leader is imperative. I call it decisional capital. As a principal, you want to be able to make decisions that will positively affect the greater good of the student. Remember, we are there to serve students. Now, first and foremost, we're there to serve our staff and our teachers. But as a principal, the decisions you make, that will affect your teachers, your support staff, your student groups, your families, your educational partners. So if you can use chat GPT to give you some examples on what would happen if I make this decision based on this? What are some of the ethical barriers if I make this decision? Now, of course, take that problem, solve it with a group because collective efficacy is huge. You don't necessarily want to take an artificial intelligence information and say, oh, I'm going to do it this way. I, I say, take it, problem solve, grapple with the information so that it can help you make those decisions so that you can have a better understanding of what's happening because there's nothing like having more insight on what you're doing. But take the information with a team and say, these are some of the suggestions that I came up with. What do you think? That way you have a collective conversation. Tip number three, personalization of learning. Now, personalization of learning from the leader perspective, the teacher perspective, and your support staff perspective and educational partners. I'm gonna set student uh, personalization of learning aside for a moment. I want you to think about your educational partners learning. Now let's start with teachers. When teachers are in the classroom, the world around it is still going. So information changes, it's increased, it's improved, it's enhanced. So for example, ChatGPT is a new initiative and a new resource or tool that you can use to give you insight on the latest research. So you can ask ChatGPT to personalize a list of professional development according to the Department of Education's K-12 plan, maybe for grade three. You could even ask GPT to write you a personalized professional development plan using the new STEM initiative for the Department of Education here in the United States that came out in November, actually December 2022, this past year, to enhance what's happening in your school site um, and or district if you're a district leader. 
There are so many things. And maybe you have a professional development that you've been doing, but it's not making change, but you know that it works for other school sites. You can ask uh, chat GPT, this is a professional development that I've been doing, but it's not making change. What can I do to improve upon this professional development to help teachers help their students learning outcomes increase in whatever area, mathematics, um, language, science, um, and maybe the integration of all of that. So think about what you could ask it to help your professional development. Maybe you are having trouble with educational partners wanting to be engaged. What are some um, new strategies that I can do to bring our families into the school um, site aside from coming to all of the events like football games and awards assemblies? How do I get them to come in to do a professional learning so that they know how, how to help their children at home? I highly recommend that tip. Throw that in chat GPT and see what happens. Now, if you haven't watched my previous videos on uh, resources in chat GPT, go back to this video and think about what you can do differently so that you can use chat GPT because there's a list of them. And if you don't know what they are, I will put them in my bio. Tip number four, predictive analytics. ChatGPT can help you predict and analyze trends that are happening either at your school site or around the world or in the neighborhood that could affect the learning of students. So you can ask ChatGPT, I noticed that our attendance is declining. What are some of the trends that are happening in my area, somewhere in Southern California or wherever you are, that I can help mitigate so that we can improve our attendance? Our attendance. We can. You can also ask ChatGPT, what can I do differently with the students that I have because their performance in mathematics is higher than the state average? What can I do to accelerate students? What can I do to intervene with students? What's the latest research out there? And it will provide this information. You can also ask it to look at the latest trend and the research and give you articles that you can hand out to your teachers and or educational partners to analyze with you. You can ask it these questions. So think about that for a moment. Ponder that. If you were to ask ChatGPT, and I love that my dog decided it was going to interject, wonder which one that was. <laughs> if you could ask ChatGPT to basically provide professional learning that will help you with the predictive analytics that's happening in the classroom, or what if you have one student and you are in a um, a student study session as to why the student is perform isn't performing well, and you put in all of the student's data and you ask the parent, what's happening at home? I, well, I noticed that my child seems to not wanna come out of his or her room. I noticed that my child doesn't wanna play sports anymore. Well, asking the child, is there anything that you wanna tell us that you haven't shared before that's making you not wanna come to school? You might be surprised. They might tell you, well, my best friend doesn't want to be my friend anymore. Throw that in there. And now you can you can come up with some strategies to help this student because the emotional well-being wasn't a factor before. And we weren't thinking about that. It'll give you some strategies. So think about that in a perspective of how you can help your teachers help your students. Now, I am aware that many school districts have not opened up the artificial intelligence for you to do this at school. So obviously, you're going to have to play with it at home. And I am an advocate for teachers and principals trying to do most of their work at school. However, in this situation, I'm going to ask you to play and do your own professional learning and jump, jump into some type of chat GPT so that you can do your own learning to see what it can do, what are the limitations, and what are the pros and cons of chat GPT. So get to playing and remember that tip, predictive analytics, tip number four. Tip number five, improving communication between educational partners. Now, wouldn't it be amazing if you could improve your collective conversations or your communication, communication skills with your ed partners, teachers, parents, students, um, community partners, businesses, so that you increase what I call social capital, 
When you increase the social capital of a community and they start to work together and solve problems together, the academic achievement of students increases exponentially. You can look that up with John Hattie's work on um, uh, clarity for learning and visible learning as um, specifically, um, oh my gosh, sometimes you just, you blank. Let me ponder that for a second. The collective efficacy and the effect size of collective efficacy, meaning work together. Oh, yeah, I lose my train of thought too sometimes. So think about how chat bots or chat GPT can give you some uh, information to help you improve your communication with your education partners. Now, I'm going to tell you that there are limitations with any artificial intelligence. What you put into it is basically going to affect what the output is. And also the artificial intelligence is powered by programmers, engineers, the typically uh, the programming language they use is Python. And whoever is programming, they have their own biases. So whatever you put in, you want to find some research to enhance that, whether you go to Google Scholar um, or you go to the ERIC system or a university platform library to get some more articles to help you with this, because I'm going to challenge you to put in student demographics by percentage. And I don't mean just um, race and ethnicity. I mean um, economically disadvantaged students with disabilities, the number of English language learners you have, parent um, graduation rates based on, do they graduate from high school? Do they have a bachelor's degree? Do they have a um, master's degree? Do they have the terminal doctorate degree? What is it? What are your demographics? Put that in and then ask some questions. And then maybe put in specifically the cultures in your community to see what it gives you. And then dialogue with your families and tell them the truth. I put this in chat GPT. It's an artificial intelligence to give me ideas on how we can communicate better, better, bring the community in, put some paper up all over the place and ask questions. What do you think about this idea? And be honest, especially if you're not of the minoritized group. Um, maybe you are, maybe you're a female and that's not typical as a principal in your area. Um, or maybe you're um, a male and you're of the black and brown community and or maybe you're a white um, principal. Think about when you talk to, to people in their cultures, be honest, this is new to me. I am not aware of your culture, but I want to learn with you. Just like we want to learn with chat GPT. There is nothing that is perfect. But when you are honest with your community about the learning you want to do with them, there is nothing they probably won't do with you or for you. So let's repeat those five tips for effective use of ChatGPT as an introduction as to what you can do differently in your school community. Here are those five tips. Tip number one, ChatGPT can help you with automation of repetitive tasks. Tip number two, <laughs> improve decision-making. Tip number three, personalization of learning. Tip number four, predictive anal uh, analytics. And tip number five, improved communications. Please take some time, play with ChatGPT. Don't let it get ahead of you. Everything is a learning experience. You remember your first cell phone, your smartphone. You, those of you that are close to my age, you're half a century old, you remember the first time we got access to an iPod or an iPad or better yet, a CD player. Everything is learning. And if we say we're going to just negate it, we're going to get left behind. And if you think about your high school self, your parents' high school self back in the classroom, we're still in a box in classrooms. The world is uh, increasingly um, not necessarily passing us by, but it is learning exponentially, whether we want to embrace it or not. And yes, be cautious, always be cautious, but look at the pros and the cons and learn with it. Because if we don't, don't if we, oh my gosh, isn't this funny? If we don't learn with the, the artificial intelligence, then it will learn for us and it will leave us behind. We want to learn with it. And one day when we talk about artificial intelligence and the programming language that students need to be a part of because their voice needs to be in it, because we want diversity in the voice and artificial intelligence, 
that day is coming. So let's talk about that in, in an upcoming YouTube. And thank you so much for watching my channel. Please make sure you subscribe, turn on the bell, like the video, and yes, comment. Tell me what you're doing, the great things that you're doing at your school site.